the live view solo. Huh? Live view solo. This device is so awesome. You could come into it with an SDI cable. You could come into it, if you were an amateur, with an HDMI cable. Built into the live view solo is the capacity to stream over multiple network devices. So I could stream not only with my wired network cable, but also with my internal Wi-Fi network interface card, but also I've got one, two USB 3.0 ports. Those USB 3.0 ports could be populated with USB modems, the 4G LTE data plans that you get from Verizon or AT&T. LiveView is one of the highest end streaming encoders out there. It takes your HD footage, cuts it up across its multiple network interfaces, automatically balances the load across the 4G LTE modems that have the best connection, taking into account maybe your wired network has the best connection, maybe your Wi-Fi network has the best connection. So let's say they're ranked in order from one, two, three, and four. It's going to put the heaviest load on the best connection, next heaviest load on the middlest connection, etc. Then, streaming from LiveView to LiveView's cloud, the cloud puts it all back together pristinely. It's got some special sauce. They call it the LiveView something something. It's special sauce, and it delivers your high-definition video as high-definition internet video better than almost anybody in the game. I'm going to finish up here, and then I'm going to take your question. Uh, the question is... <laughs> Give me one sec. Okay. The Live View Solo is awesome. It takes your high definition in. All right? It splits the high definition out across multiple, multiple network interfaces. And it works great with Facebook. All right, let's have your question. Uh, the question is, uh, do you have to pay Live View to, to use the, the interface? I'm glad you asked that question. Virg, can we put up our Live View graphic? So first you have to buy the encoder. The Live View Solo is $1,500. It, um, it does all that special sauce that I was talking about. Then you've got to have one year's worth of Live View's cloud service. That's $450. All right? So you, you purchase together the Live View Solo encoder. It comes with one year of Live View's cloud service. Remember, the cloud service is the special sauce, the, um, the re remuxing of the multiple network interfaces. Okay? What it doesn't come with is USB 4G LTE modems. That's why it's a BYO USB 4G LTE. You've got to bring your own. There are other LiveView products that come with SIM cards and data plans for 4G LTE data. The LiveView Solo does not come with that. So if you're experienced at streaming on the LAN network, on the Wi-Fi network, you don't need to use those USB modems. If you're in a place that has low quality cabled internet, or if you're in a hard-to-reach place that has great cell service, or if you just want to ensure your delivery with multiple network interfaces, get a couple of 4G LTE modems with data plans from your favorite provider. So 1949 gets you the encoder and gets you one year of LiveView Solo Cloud. So let's jump onto my um, laptop here, and I'll show you how to configure that LiveView Solo Cloud. So here we are. Uh, we remember that we're streaming to my page. I love streaming. Watch my show. We know that everybody streaming to Facebook uses the same URL. Everybody gets a different stream key. So I'm going to copy that stream key, and then I'm going to go into my LiveView Solo Cloud account. This is where I can not only create um, streaming profiles, but also save them all so that I can switch easily between different streaming profiles. So I'm going to jump in here. And you can see, oh, they've got a Facebook integration. They've got a Twitter integration, Periscope integration, YouTube integration, Ustream, Daycast. All this stuff is pre-done for you. Or you can do your own generic RTMP streaming profile. But Jesse, you might say, why wouldn't you just use Facebook? Well, I could use Facebook. But let's say I am using Facebook. Where could I stream? I could stream on my personal profile, selfie streaming. Or I could stream directly to my pages, selfie streaming. Or I could stream to an event. Streaming to an event is cool because you could create an event and invite people to the event. And then, as a live stream, you could post to that event. It's a workaround. I would much rather create the event that is the live stream. So as far as I'm concerned, this is selfie streaming. It doesn't give your clients an opportunity to click on Get Reminded when the stream goes live. 
but using Facebook's integration tools, I can make that. I can make that in advance, get a reminder when I go live. So I go to my solo. I go not to their Facebook integration, but instead to generic RTMP streaming. Boom, here we are. Stream name is the same thing as a stream key. Luckily, I copied it. Now I can paste it. Stream URL, there's only one. It's Facebook's streaming URL. Copy it. Paste it. Dunzos. We can rename it. Jesse Facebook live stream profile. Oh, we need to use a profile. Does anybody know what Facebook wants as your profile? 1280. 1280 by 720. Great. In fact, um, it behooves us now to take a moment. We forgot to do this in the Facebook settings portion, but let's bring up that Facebook settings graphic. What does Facebook want you to stream in? The maximum Facebook quality is 1280 by 720, 30p. Critical to know that. Don't send them 1920 by 1080. It makes them work too hard to crunch it down. Send them 1280 by 720, and you're in their native maximum resolution, 30 frames per second progressive. What about bit rate, you might ask? 4 megabits per second. But Jesse, I only speak in kilobits per second. No problem. Multiply it by 1,000. 4 megabytes per second is 4,000 kilobits per second. OK, critically and often overlooked on the bottom, AAC audio and H.264 video. You want to stream in H.264, and you must encode your audio in AAC. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. If you're using Adobe Flash Media Encoder, you will not be able to stream to Facebook until you download a plugin that enables AAC encoding. And uh, that's done, that's sold by our friends at a company called Media Concepts. It's called the AAC plugin for Adobe Flash Media Encoder. It's like 300 bucks. So is anything really free? <laughs> Just a reminder, Facebook wants you in 1280 by 720, 30p, nothing higher than that. What happens if you stream something to Facebook at higher quality than they have asked for? So presumably, Facebook is going to take anything you get, even if it matches, re-encode it, crush it down, and spit out 720 max. They're even going to make it lower for you so that they can deliver to people watching on 300 kilobit per second connections. So regardless of what you send Facebook, they're going to crush it down and send it out in multiple bit rate. The highest that Facebook will deliver are those settings there. You can stream to them in a higher bit rate. Will it look great? I don't know. My experience is send them exactly what they're looking for. I've sent, man, I failed a lot, uh, particularly when it comes to streaming video to Facebook. We finally got it now. But um, one of the reasons I failed is I sent them too much data all at once, and they, they just choked on all the data I was sending them and couldn't deliver it at 720. Another reason I failed at Facebook is because I was playing music. And I don't mean having a speaker on playing music. I mean pumping in my stream a little background music, OK? Um, you know, at the beginning of a stream, since we're sort of an immature, not, not that mature yet delivery platform, it's hard to know when you go from not streaming yet to streaming. Right? Especially when it's on a schedule, rather than pushing a button to go live. You're just expecting Facebook's clock to chime in. So a couple of tricks you might pull is having some background music and a graphic. Well, take it from me. Don't have background music. Why? Facebook's robots that are searching for copyright violations are so mean. And like, even if I wrote the song and copyrighted it and was playing it on my own channel, because it has a copyright, Facebook will crush my stream, knock me down, knock me out. And then I lost all of the promoting that I've done, all of the get reminders that my clients did for my unique URL from a week before. Just trust me, don't play music until Facebook's copyright bots sort of back off a little bit. We've got our finger on the pulse there. We'll send you guys an email when that happens. Oh, no. I only have one minute until my stream goes away. It's 434. Check this out. In my preview window, it's like, oh, my god, 425. Your preview isn't running. You're offline. So quick. Go to the Live View Solo. Tell it submit. Tell it start. And is it started? It said started stream successfully. So my encoder should be running. And because my encoder is running, presumably when I go back to the Facebook, it'll say fetching stream. Oh, my time limit expired. Oh, man. man. Let's just do it real quick. And does anybody remember the steps that it takes to create a new scheduled stream? Yes. Yes? What's the first step? Publishing tools. Publishing tools. So actually, step one is go to your page. <laughs> step two is publishing tools. Step three is videos. Step four is plus live.
Huzzah! We have a RTMP. Do I need to copy that? Nope. nope. It's the same one as ever. But the stream ID is unique, so I'll copy that. I'll go to next. How far in advance do I have to schedule this? Yes, 10 minutes. Thank you so much. So this is our second attempt. And the video title is attempt two. But you need that URL two. when you go into the encoder page. That's correct. I've copied that stream key. No, the URL, good, good point. You need the URL when you go to the encoder page, except if you've already done an encoder page and put that URL in there. It doesn't change. OK. So we are going to not just go live. We are going to schedule live. We're going to do it for 4.47. It automatically gives me 10 minutes in the future. I'm going to schedule this. And there it is. I'm going to go into here. This is our second attempt. Fetching video stream. It's looking for my encoder, looking for my encoder. There are currently no encoders streaming to that unique URL. But we can change that. Go back to the live view solo. Here we are. This was our Facebook live stream profile that expired. So I'm going to go back into my cloud. I'm going to go down to the bottom where it saved my Jesse Facebook live stream profile. I'm going to edit it. What's the only thing I have to update? The stream name, which is identical to the, the stream key. So I highlighted it. I pasted the new one on. I could, if I wanted to, go into profile settings and say, do I need to override my resolution, my bit rate, or my frame rate? Probably. Probably. What does the frame rate need to be? 30. 30. Definitely. Well, let's make it 2997, because we're broadcast guys. We're broadcast guys. All right, I'm going to override my resolution. What's that going to be? 1280 by 720. Why not? Now I'm, I could. Well, I, if I wanted to, I could mash my bit rate down to what bit rate? Four, four megs. Four megs, but this is measured in kilobits per second, so it's got to be 4,000. Four That's right, but as of now, LiveView ghosts that option out because they already know. You don't want to be any more than 4,000. Okay, we're going to submit uh, destination conflict, streaming destination already exists. Remember, we're editing an existing streaming location. They're asking me, are you sure you want to overwrite your profile? Yes, I'm sure. I want to stream again, but with a different URL. Let's override this. Done. Now, solo unit configured successfully. And finally, start streaming. Streaming started successfully. Can I share with you something else that I love about the Live View Solo camera? Thank you. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. It's telling me. I'm streaming. It's telling me my bit rate. And uh, it's hard to see, but uh, you see my finger there? <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to share with you is that I've got a video preview window on this LCD viewfinder. Wow. And I'm streaming at 1.5 meg. Uh, yeah, about 1.8. Ooh, it's climbing. I'm streaming at about 2 megs a second. It's really ramping up, OK? That's going to get up to about 4 megs and stop if my internet bandwidth can handle it. If I needed more internet bandwidth, because I'm on a live view solo, what could I add to it? A USB 4G LTE modem with a data plan, boom, tripled my up, upstream bandwidth. OK, I have now started my encoder. What do we expect in my three-tab video window? Fetching live video stream, and this can take a few seconds, it says. <laughs> boom, there we are, live video. Now, it is of critical importance that when you're doing this, that you mute your computer. Why? Here's what's going to happen when I unmute my computer. There we are. Oh, man, it's me again yeah. talking, but at a different time period. And you get crazy echoes. So take it from me. Mute your computer. Okay? It is a good thing to check and make sure that you're getting audio. But as soon as that's done, mute it. Trust me. You don't want to hear it. Uh, OK. So for $1,949, you can have the highest quality encoding for a whole year. And you can stream directly to Facebook. And you can schedule your events in advance. And you can monitor your video and audio preview in advance of the stream. In fact, let's go back to that for just a moment. It's so critical to see that your video and your audio are going to come through. But this isn't going to stream live for another 10 minutes. What happens if I had to do something like, I don't know, somebody powered off my encoder. So we stop the unit. Let's watch what happens on the Facebook page when you stop your encoder. Okay, So here's my Facebook page. This was our video preview window. Look at that. It froze. Why did it freeze? My encoder stopped encoding. Okay, But because it's not going to be live, live, live for another six minutes or so, we're cool. We don't mind. I could like navigate away, navigate back to basic, and look. It's going to try to fetch, fetch the video stream, and it won't fetch it again. Why doesn't it fetch the video preview? My encoder has stopped running. 
Okay? I ran into a problem. Somebody, against all the rules, kept their cup of water on the table and knocked it over. Somebody ran out and got a new encoder because it got fried. So, in our case, actually, I just stopped encoding. If I wanted to, I could go back to my live view solo, not change anything in the profile, start streaming again. Okay? Streaming started successfully. I'm going to hold up the number two for camera one so that it, when we go check it out, it'll know. Here we are. We're live again. See? My mouse is moving again. I guess if I hold up the number two again, you'll know that I am truly live. Boom. There's my video preview. Right? Cool. Okay. So when am I going to be in a situation where I'm going to want to add a modem? Great question. When will you be in a situation where you want to add a modem? So I had to do a, sh a television show on Facebook live from a tattoo parlor. I went to the tattoo parlor, did my site survey, did the uh, speedtest.net, and it turned out that they had about 2 megabits of upstream bandwidth. Now, I like to stream at 4 megabits per second to Facebook. If, if the house internet limited me to 2 megabits per second, I'm kind of out of options. I need to add some bandwidth. So I added two USB 4G LTE modems with data plans. Each data plan had like 5 megabits per second. So now I'm looking at 15 megabit per second capacity to stream a 4 megabit per second show. Okay, so just to be clear, when you go to some place to live stream, they have to have internet. Great question. Yeah. If you go to some place to live stream, they'd better have some internet. Yeah, okay. If they do not have internet, Grab yourself a solo, or there are other products from LiveView. There are other products from our friends at Teradek and our friends at Streambox and some other folks also that you can add multiple, like five, six, ten USB 4G LTE data modems. Okay, and that's how you boost your bandwidth. But um, my favorite lately is the LiveView because uh, it's got that special sauce. Everybody's got special sauce, but I, I happen to like theirs. All right. I'd like to take this opportunity again to thank everybody for participating. Thank you in Facebook world. Thank you for asking your questions, watching. Thank you to my friends who came all the way to Midtown Video to watch this seminar with us. If you guys have any questions, we are so happy to answer them. We are the professionals at streaming video, even if it's going to Facebook. Buy your encoders from us, get free tech support, and take your live events to Facebook Live events. Thank you, everyone, for watching.